have to add myself to the stream. I don't forgot. Hello and welcome back to Living Abroad. My name is Alex, and today we have a very exciting live stream for you guys. But hopefully, it's going to be very informative. We're going to talk about ten mistakes that foreigners make coming to the Philippines. Now, these are not ten mistakes that I just randomly gathered through, uh, you know, Google search or some random thing. This is actually ten things that I've noticed through my own experiences doing over hundreds, like actually literally hundreds of interviews with foreigners and living in the Philippines for over a year total combined. But before we get into all of that, I want to give a big thank you to East Coast Refugee, who has become one of the first members of the YouTube channel. So if you guys don't know, just yesterday, I released a video announcing big, big news for the channel. I'm finally pushing forward with memberships. A lot of times you guys send me emails, comments. You guys are using super chat, super stickers supporting me through buy me a coffee and always inviting me to your uh, resort your hotel to stay for free because you're appreciating uh, the content that i'm putting out so this basically memberships is a paid way you guys can get more from the channel and you're actually directly helping me sustain this channel because of course cost of uh, traveling and staying in these places are high and youtube is my only source of income i'm not like one of the older guys that has like a pension or, or like a monthly income of some other kind. So big thank you to East Coast Refugee who's become a member. We're gonna talk about memberships a lot in this video because it's the first live stream after the launch of the memberships. But we also have 10 personal lists, 10 things I made here. Now, initially, I tried to use ChatGPT to go ahead and give me some kind of uh, ideas because I wanted to organize my thoughts. Sometimes I do that, but to be honest, I read ChatGPT's 10 mistakes and they sucked. So if you want to wait till the end of this video, once we go through this 10 list, we're going to go ahead and read Chad GPT's version of 10 mistakes. And you guys can tell me whose 10 you like better, mine or Chad GPT's. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much to East Coast Refugee who became one of the first members of the channel. So memberships are basically different tiers. It starts at $4.99, $14.99, and $149 a month. Now, I know it sounds like a lot of money, but I'm going to tell you what each one of these costs or what they bring to the channel and to you guys. So before we do that, I'm going to get into everybody's hellos. And it's going to be a long stream. I have a feeling it's because we have a lot to get through. So about memberships, I'm very excited because at $4.99, you get access to loyalty badges, emojis, stickers, and members-only live streams like this one. So eventually, once we have enough members on the channel, we're going to dedicate live streams only for members. Now, this could be a lot more in-depth content more adult rated stuff like dating, which dating sites to use, how to meet women, some things that I don't generally talk about in depth because this is a family channel and you know, there's a lot of different kinds of people watching this. But if you're a paid member, I'll go ahead and do that. That's just $4.99, less than a Starbucks coffee a month. And you're directly supporting myself and this channel. The second the second tier is $14.99. Now this is called the business class. The first is coach, the second is business class. You get all that. Plus you get members only, so you get everything from the first tier, plus you get members only videos, so which means I'm gonna do exclusive content, uh, personal stuff, uh, private stuff, also just new stuff about my travels, and I'm gonna share that with you guys directly. And let's see what else you get. I wrote all this down so I don't forget, guys. So that's the business class. You get new early access to videos. So anytime I release a video, you get to see it before everybody else. Photo and status updates. Sometimes I don't like taking selfies, but if you become a member, that's something I'm going to do. We take more selfies of myself, pictures, and status updates. And we're going to do members-only polls. A lot of time I ask you guys, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Where should I go? What All these polls that we do on the channel, it's going to be only members' polls. that You guys have a lot more to say about the videos. And um, next one after that's first class at $29.99. You get everything from the coach, the economy class, and you get everything from the business class, plus you get the rest of these things, which is my personal WhatsApp number. So for $29.99, once you become a first class member of the channel, you get my personal WhatsApp number. We're going to start a WhatsApp group with just members talking, just like we're friends. Anything you want to talk about, I'm going to be there. And you're going to share your thoughts with like-minded people. You're going to get lots of behind the scenes footage. Many times when I'm out there making videos, there's lots of things that I don't include in the video. Maybe people are laughing, they're giggling. Maybe they say something like they make a mistake, they want to correct themselves. So you get behind the scene footage and see how I'm living as well. And um, yeah, so a lot coming. And finally, I know guys, sorry, I just want to get this out there. Finally is the private jet class, $149 a month. Now what this does gives you a one hour one-on-one -on -one call with myself, a video call. In this one hour, 
time. We're going to talk about anything that you want, such as coming to the Philippines, how to rent an apartment, how to date somebody, red flags to watch out for, even how to start a YouTube channel. Guys, I've been doing this for two years. I wish somebody was telling me what to do and how to do it to become successful. If you don't know, this is my third channel that I've launched to monetize. The last two I did, I reached monetization in less than two months for both of them. One has over 4,000 subscribers. The other one has over 1,200 subscribers. I just don't have enough time to put into those, but they're out there. Those channels are out there. I can give you guys a link. It's not a big deal. But my point is, I know exactly what to do to become successful. So the $149 gives you access to that one-hour conference call with myself, as well as you get to pick what kind of video I should make. So if you want a question for me to ask people out there, if you want me to go to a certain place that's nearby that I can afford to go, and any kind of video that you want me to make, I'm going to make. So those are the four different tiers, economy class, business class, first class, and private jet class. I named them after travel. Of course, I love traveling. Anyways, a lot more coming. If you guys are interested in memberships, it's posted at the top of this chat box. Memberships are live now on the channel. I can't wait to get some proper members on this channel so we can go ahead and grow and continue the successful uh, journey that I'm on. So thank you so much, East Coast Refugee, for being a member of the channel. I really appreciate that. Now, let's get into it. We're going to say hello to everybody. This is going to be a long, long, long video. I have a feeling but thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, why are you tripping? I like that name. Ayo, hey, early squad. Well, go on, my youths. Why are you tripping is here? Hello. Uh, Evelyn says, hello, sir. Good AM. Good AM to you, Evelyn. Sir, for my mom. Uh, guys, one more thing. I'm going to ban everybody that's asking for money. Uh, the last live stream we did, unfortunately, brought some um, different type of crowd to the, to the channel. I don't mind helping people. I just don't have the resource to be giving out money right now. Um, so the li last live stream brought, uh, I know kind of confused everybody. I wasn't expecting it. I was blindsided. Uh, so that's not going to happen. Please do not ask for funds during this live stream. I don't have the means to be giving out money. I'm asking you guys to join memberships for my channel so I can support this channel and my lifestyle. So it doesn't make sense. I give back to the communities in many, many different ways. I just don't go ahead and record it and put it on a channel. I'm involved with, uh, dog shelters around here. I give money to the kids that I see out on the streets. And I also do Jollibee for orphanages, like we try to bring food. So I do everything away from the YouTube channel. I don't want to promote that kind of content on here. Um, send me an email if you really need or something, if I can help you out. Um, Deanna G. Warren says, hey there, glad I catch you live. Thank you for being here. What up, bro? Uh, Lewis is here. Um, how you doing? Um, Leroy, they says, mistake 11, don't have different young Filipino made for each day of the week, LOL. Hey, you call that a mistake. Some of us call that the way of living. You never know. Uh, Deanna G. Warren said, I took a trip to Jamaica. I come back in the U.S. I brought a land of Oklahoma. Might visit Thailand. I spend y'all my money on land. I spend y'all money on land. That's great. I think, it, bro, Jamaica has been on my list for a long time. I love Jamaican food, uh, jerk chicken, oxtail, of course, the patties, everything like that. So one day I'll get there. I'm glad you had a great time. Thailand's wonderful, too. So sorry, guys, if I'm rushing. I have a lot to cover, a lot to say, a lot of intros and hellos. We'll get through all this, and I'm super excited about the channel memberships. So go ahead and check that out, guys. Uh, if you have any questions about that, send me an email directly. Do you know my friends uh, over German, unplugged? I don't. Uh, I do not. Uh, why you tripping says, oh, nice. I've paid others for 200 per month for monthly group coaching calls. So 149 is a steal. Uh, thank you, Why You Trippin'. In my opinion, it's a steal because I usually charge 100 bucks for just a video call anyways. So for an additional $49, you get that plus a dedicated video of what you want to see and all the perks I mentioned from the previous three classes. So I think so as well. I'm not trying to be rich off you guys. I'm just trying to sustain this channel to be able to give you guys a lot more. I want to do these videos in different cities, right? I want to go to Manila. I want to go to some other nearby islands to get a different vibe from the Philippines. And don't forget, this is still a, a travel channel. I'm going to plan to go to different countries like Japan, Korea. I want to try to visit Latin America. I'm going to try to do this for a long time. It's been two years in the building and the making. So I really hope you guys can go ahead and see this vision that I have. Uh, Deano G. Warren says, we launched with um, Jude Kidder, a gangster gummy bear, Marcus Shadow Slayer, James K. and William Warren. Yeah, I know some of those guys that you just mentioned. I'm Deanna Gordon. My second name is Deanna Gordon. I like Lady Boys. Bye. Okay, so I see where this guy's going with all this. <laughs> um, Philip Massey, hi, Alice. What's the good news? It's probably better to do an interview outside of live streams to avoid technical issues or no-shows. Yeah, you're right. So I'm going to stop with that stuff, guys. So more 
I, I try to like bring on some guests on here. I, I can't rely on certain guests not showing up. Uh, not just the last two. I'm not trying to blame uh, Darren and his lovely wife. I'm saying people that haven't even made it to that that far. They haven't even clicked. So the past three times I try to have a guest on here, something's gone wrong at some point. And I just can't rely on people because I lose credibility. I, I, you guys hope to see certain things that doesn't show up. So we're going to stop all that. I'm just going to keep it to the interviews on the street. James says, what's up, everyone? What's up, homie? Oh, buddy. <laughs> I don't know why I said homie. Everything good. Willie Hernandez is here. Good morning, Alex and everyone on the live stream. Willie, welcome. Rich Daddy Travels the World. Hello. Okay, so hellos are out of the way. We have 30 people watching this. Let's get to the first mistake that people make when they come to the Philippines. Now, these are all my mistakes or my thoughts, what I consider a mistake. My personal written down notes. I actually have 11, to be honest, one bonus one. And um, we're going to compare my notes, my top 10, to chat GPT's top 10 after. And we'll see whose top 10 mistakes you like better. And if you're watching this as a podcast, or sorry, listening to this, because these streams are now live available as a podcast, they're just under the playlist in the channel. So check those out if you're driving to work or just doing some work around the house and you want to listen to the top 10 mistakes. Number one, foreigners do not plan. What do I mean by that? I mean, a lot of times foreigners come here without a plan. They just get up, come to the Philippines, and they don't plan well. You need to understand why are you coming to the Philippines? Are you here for short term, long term? Are you coming here as a business venture? Are you coming here for a relationship? Are you coming here to get away from the Western lifestyle or the cycle that you've been living all your life? How old are you? All these things make a big difference in how your time will be spent here in the Philippines. So you need to have a proper plan. And I'm not just saying pre-preparation. I'm saying once you're here, we're going to get into a little bit more detail in a minute. But number one, they do not plan their trip to the Philippines properly. So they don't have the slightest clue. They watch some YouTube videos. They say, wow, beaches, women, cost of living. Let's just go. They don't plan the trip here to the Philippines. They don't have a long-term plan, whether they're going to be here six months, a year, whether it's a two-week vacation, anything like that. So guys, go ahead and plan your trip to the Philippines. This is not something you want to just willy-nilly do, unless you just want to come here maybe on vacation. You don't want to plan anything. You're here for two weeks. You're going to just explore this and that and just get out. That's okay. So that's my number one thing. Foreigners do not plan. That's the first mistake. Hello, Miss Independent, I-N-D-E-P-E-N. Anyway, so thank you for becoming a member of the channel. Much love to you, Miss Independent. I appreciate that. You've become a member of the channel. We're going to do live streams and everything else. So thank you for that, Miss Independent. Has now become a new member of the channel. Thank you so much. Um, let's go back up to some hellos. So uh, Rich Daddy Travels the World says hello. Hello to you, sir. Uh, why are you tripping? Number one mistake, don't bring sad sand to the beach <laughs> so don't bring sand to the beach why are you tripping so mr why are you tripping says do not bring your significant other to the philippines basically come here the single man be free do not bring no women no ladies or boys depends what you're into or guys i should say to the beach so come here as a free man um balsa farmers good morning good morning to you Whoa, I'm the worst planner. Are you talking to me? LOL. Maybe if you want to have a good stay in the in the Philippines, number one mistake some people do, they do not plan. Uh, Miss Independence, a new member, feel free to ask some questions as usual. Miss Independent, I always appreciate your comments. Uh, you seem very intelligent, uh, articulate, and you express yourself well. Uh, Willie Hernandez says, one big mistake is not knowing when you are with the wrong Filipina and not knowing how to cut it off in a respectful way. All right, so Willie Hernandez out here dropping some real info right some real knowledge that's true so i'm going to get into some of that quickly but as willie's comment here you're right you have to understand and recognize when the filipina is not not right for you you know sometimes us men we really get um focused on the the physical part of things let's say this girl is very very attractive perhaps they're way out of your league you're just kind of like in la la land you just can't wait to like spend time with her and you sometimes miss all the red flags, right? So whether that's miscommunication, whether they're using you for your money, whether they have other guys on the side, whether they're simply not interested in you, whether they have alternative motives. Now, guys, this is not just the Philippines. This can be applied to anyone in any country, right? So um, that's a big mistake. You have to learn how to recognize these signs and how to respectfully cut it off. And that doesn't mean you have to ghost the person, but you sit them down and say, listen here, I noticed that this is what's happening with our relationship. I really need to fix this. 
or we need to end this, right? So sometimes people just don't know they're making a mistake, right? Maybe they're out every night partying. They don't even know that's affecting you in some way. They're like, you know what? I don't even need to be out there with my girls. I'd rather spend time with you and see them during the day or something. Whatever the situation, communication is key. And as Willie Hernandez says, you got to know how to like break it off respectfully. James Nixon. Hey, Alex, I'm in KL now and was partying with some peas. Hey, Kuala Lumpur, a beautiful place. I can't wait to go back. You know, Malaysia was definitely a surprise for me. I had no idea when I went there what to expect. And it just really blew me out the water. I love the people, the food, the infrastructure, the buildings, the way of life. And it just seemed everything was like organized, at least the places I went to. So KL, I'm glad you're there enjoying yourself, James Nixon. Um, why are you tripping agreeing with Miss Independent? Away, Yardam. Big man asking big questions. How do we avoid the lady boys? Well, first of all, physically, they're very, if you're not into the lady boys or trans peoples, um, it's very obvious from their physical appearance. You know, sometimes they're taller, they're much more broader. <laughs> this is going to be so bad, but it is what it is. They got broader shoulders. You can see the Adam's apple. Uh, perhaps their voices don't match and uh, simply ask them, say, excuse me, are you a real woman or are you becoming a woman? If they get offended, it is what it is. At least you avoid a whole bunch of headache. At least that's how you can tell uh, by just simply asking them. But yeah, good question, Ways. I appreciate that. Marco Polo. Hello from Thailand, my friend. Hello, Marco Polo. I ran into you on, on the street. I remember that was quite the experience. What, what are the chances, right? Uh, Mike M, my mistake, don't get blinded by beauty and ignore the red flags. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So Blue Jays logo, nice one, by the way. Um, some Yeah, you're going to learn from your mistakes. That's the other thing. You have to learn from your mistakes. You can't keep repeating the same things. And this happens often because um, that's just life. And I've made mistakes before, and sometimes I've repeated them. But you won't learn unless you learn from them. James Nixon said, hey, Alex, spent the weekend partying with some Filipinos here in KL. So much fun. It was interesting hearing from them saying KL is cheaper than the Philippines. It is in some ways. That's the surprising thing about the Philippines. Although cost of living is relatively low compared to the West, like Canada, U.S., U.K., Europe, most countries, I find it much more, I don't know, you, you just pay a little bit more for things, especially accommodation, and you just get lower quality things. And I feel like International food is a bit more expensive as well. <laughs> Philip Massey says, think with the right head. Yes, exactly. Oh, so this is kind of cool. Miss Independent, I can see you got a little sticker uh, badge and your name color has changed on YouTube because you're a member. So kind of cool, right? Happy Independence, Philippines. Hi, Sir Alex. Hello, Miss Independent. Is that what today is? Is that why it's a holiday? Or is this July? Yeah, it's Independence Day in the Philippines. Happy Independence Day. East Coast Refugee, YouTube is very hard work, and you uh, and you do a great job. They've been watching for a while. Hello from the U.S., 40-year-old software engineer in Chicago currently. East Coast Refugee, thank you so much. I appreciate the kind words. I appreciate you becoming a member, one of the first members of the channel, and thank you for the kind words and feedback because it is hard work. I do enjoy it, but I'll be lying to myself if I say it's not time-consuming and stressful at times, but I'm glad that you guys are enjoying it. We've got 56 people right now watching, guys. If you're new to the channel, I recently announced memberships out here. So take a look at memberships, what we offer, or I keep saying we because I see you guys as me and one, whatever. What I offer on the channel for different price ranges. So take a look at the channel memberships if you're interested. We have two people that already signed up just from this live stream in 20 minutes. So I promise to deliver exactly what I said, guys. Um, let's go back to some more comments and I'll go to number two of mistakes that people make coming here. Uh, Marco Polo says, I feel ladies now are good in lies. In 2023, they're good at convincing you of the opposite. Be careful and smart in dating. Social networks got worse because of that. Yeah. So I don't want to keep bashing women, but they they know what they're doing. They know how to play with your uh, with your heartstrings. They know what to say exactly. They know how to play the long game sometimes, guys. So. You really do have to be careful. Just like men play women sometimes uh, to get physical affection by lying to them, women do the opposite or the same, but for money. They, they say things that you want to hear. They do things that you want to feel, and they do all this to eventually get some money out of you or just use you for whatever reason, right? It happens. 
you really got to be careful. And social media is making this a lot more accessible. And and women are out there talking to a whole bunch of people at, at times. And it does happen that sometimes they take advantage of men. So you really got to be careful um, when it comes to that. John is here. John says, good morning. I don't think I'll learn anything from this dialogue. I've been married for 18 years and lived in 14 years. That's great. You know, this conversation may not be for you, but uh, we have a lot of different comments. The topic is 10 mistakes, but as usual, we always gear off to other topics. Feel free to ask any alternative questions, John. I'm more than happy to answer. Philip Massey, uh, live like a local and don't compare the prices to your home country. Keep to your budget and don't try to be high roller. Excellent points, Philip. You're making some great points. So when you first come here, it always happens. Any country you travel to, if the cost of living is lower, initially you either overpay, over tip, or overspend because you're comparing things back to your local currency usually. But as time goes on, you start to learn to live like a local. Now, 20 cents, 40 cents, 50 cents isn't much at all. But when you start paying more and more for these prices, you're also damaging the local population. Let's say I go on a taxi or a motorbike taxi ride and I keep over tipping. When I keep paying more, the riders are going to expect more. So what happens? They might raise the price and the locals have to pay that price too. There's a lot of downfalls for over tipping, overpaying, all these things. Before I continue, guys, let's go to number two. So mistake number one was not planning before a trip on so many different levels, right? The second one is the requirements. The mistake that people make, they don't understand the requirements to come to the Philippines. And not just the Philippines, any country you visit to. A lot of times I'm shocked to know people getting turned away at the airport, being denied boarding, or getting sent back for some ridiculous reason. Guys, especially Americans, I'm sorry to say, but you guys need to do your homework. You don't just get to go wherever you want, whenever you want, uh, for whatever reason, right? So for the Philippines itself, as Canadian, American, most European countries, they have 30 days to get here. So when you get here, you can stay here for 30 days. And you need to show an onward or exit ticket within those 30 days. Many people don't have that ticket, whether it's a real one or a fake one. When you board the plane, usually the airline wants to see that you're exiting the Philippines within 30 days, right? So that's one important thing. Also, you have to try, you have to fill out the e-card. So now they have a digital thing where you have to fill out your information. It's like a declaration card, but it's online. It, it, it's going to give you like a code. Everybody has to fill that out, and you have to fill that out as well. So, and if you require a visa from a country that is not the U.S. or Canada or whatever, then you have to get that visa prior to come to the Philippines. And that's just a documentation. You have to know that your passport needs to be six months valid or longer before you travel. So there's a lot of things you have to know before coming here. So requirements for your trip is important, right? So make sure you have that um, figured out. And even simple thing as like your taxi. How are you going to get from the airport to your hotel? Is there going to be a hotel pickup? Do you require to, you know, book one ahead of time? Things like that. So just be sure you have all that uh, set in place before coming here. That's mistake number two. People don't know their requirements when they come to the Philippines. Let me have a sip of my water. East Coast. Uh, Balsa Pharma says to East Coast, uh, yeah, many YouTubers don't want to miss coming to the Philippines and gain subscribers from the Philippines because the support market is high. Once you landed in the Philippines, the Filipino people know you, you're a vlogger. Uh, let me kind of address that a little bit. This is a little bit off topic, but I want to kind of talk about this. It's very true. If you come to the Philippines and you want to start your channel and be a vlogger, usually, depending on what your content is, Filipinos are very supportive. But that can also damage your channel completely if you plan on being outside the Philippines or making content that's not about the Philippines, because to be honest, from my experience, Filipinos do not care about your videos if it's not Philippines related. So unless you want to be here permanently, unless your YouTube channel is going to be only Philippines focused, then that's fine. But you're going to corner yourself into a little market, which is the Philippines. And also the Philippines has a very low C CPM, like click per million or per thousand. Basically, YouTube ads pay you less if you're watching from the Philippines, right? So if you, there's a lot of things to consider. Yes, subscribers are good, but they're not as good as they used to be. Right now, the only thing that matters on YouTube is two things. One being uh, duration. How long is somebody watching your videos for? The second thing is click-through rates. So how often are people choosing your video when they see it on the screen? Anyways, I can get into all the stuff if you're becoming a private jet member and if you want to start a YouTube channel. 
I got so much information in my head that needs to get out for someone that wants to become a YouTuber. If you guys are interested in that, we can talk more in detail. Uh, moving on, Marco Polo says, that's a red flag. I noticed many dating apps around the world. I always see Filipinas located in London and Amsterdam, others, but they're not actually there. Don't get fooled. They change their location. <laughs> yeah, they do. Everybody does. Um, even men for Tinder or whatever, people change their location to see women across the world. So if you're trying to get a relationship started in the place that you think they're in, the first question you should ask them, where are you? Where are you living? How long will you be there? So if it's a country or a place that you never intend on visiting, why even bother that, like pursue that relationship, right? Don't waste your time. Very good point, Marco Polo. Samantha Jones. Hi, Alex. Happy on Independence Day, Philippines. Samantha, welcome to the live stream. And yes, happy Independence Day. Uh, Evelyn's here. Hello, sir. Watching from Sibilan Negros Oriental, Philippines, sir. Welcome to the channel. Very cool spot. Jeff's here. Uh, Tetrich Unstable Freak. Uh, good morning, Alex. Do you know if there will be any special events in Cebu for Independence Day today? I assume there must be. I kind of want to get out there and figure that out. I don't know. I don't know anything specific. I, I thought I saw a big banner somewhere. There might be something going on in an IT park or Ayala Mall. There usually is on the weekend, so I really think there will be. I don't know anything specific, though. Rich Daddy Travel says, good job. Thank you. Marco Polo, and remember the girls looking at you are not a good one. Too easy, ask why. Yeah, so sometimes... If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. So, uh, especially if they don't know you or your personality, ask yourself why is this person so interested in me. Uh, there might be a reason, right? And it may not be your physical looks because, let's face it, we're usually past our prime by now, and we're just traveling either on a retirement plan or or something. So just double check that. Let's go on to number three. So we talked about two mistakes already: not planning enough and not knowing what the requirements are. Number three, um, so people that move here long-term, they don't sort out their own things back home. I'm talking about things like banking. How are you gonna send yourself money? Have you canceled all your visas that you're not gonna need? Have you ended all your subscription to any kind of magazine or whatever you're not gonna need back home? Um, renting out your house, is somebody managing your property? So figuring out all that kind of stuff is important. Have you contacted your credit card? Let them know you're traveling for a long period of time. Do you have health insurance? Like, are you, what, what if something happens to you abroad? So these are the type of things that you need to like basically iron out before you come here. They're really important and significant. And you want to have that sorted out before coming to the Philippines. And that's number three. Uh, Rick Rick says, leave your Western thinking and was in the West and go to the flow. Yeah. So Rick Rick says, leave your Western thinking behind and go with the flow once you come here. Leave that stuff in the West. That's actually on my list, uh, Rick Rick. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, is 1,800 monthly enough to live there? Yes, it's more than enough to live here, 100%. I'm going to make very, very detailed videos about cost of living in the Philippines. Coming up in the future, it's really time consuming, and I got a lot of content. So just stick around, bear with me, and we'll get that sorted out. How much can I buy a wife for? For free, bro. Filipinos will love you regardless. You don't have to pay for wives here. <laughs> um... Matteo, do you have only 30 days? Uh, I heard something. They changed it to 60 recently. I don't know. I have no confirmation. I had 30 days, but I've just recently extended my visa. Video on visa extension coming soon to the channel this week. I'll show you guys exactly how to extend your visa. Uh, Warden Trinkle, hey, friend. I finally made you live here. Hey, hi, dear. Hi. Hey, I'm glad you're here. Warden, I know I saw your message. You finally made your uh, appearance on our live stream. Feel free, feel free to ask any questions that you have. Um, We'll go ahead and uh, comment. You're back in the UK. I'm hoping you had a great time traveling. Uh, Willie Hernandez, when you're on vacation, don't turn into a vacation millionaire. It's okay to spend, but within reason. And don't flex too much over there. You'll become an easy target. Excellent, excellent point, Willie. That's exactly what I would say. All Everything you mentioned is going to be on my list coming up in the top 10. Yeah. Oh, is it cost per mile, 1,000? This is regarding my previous comment about the lowest CPM. Um, James says, it seems like they say sir a lot. Philippines at Bathurst and Wilson don't only really say that much. Yeah, they say sir, ma'am, 
uh, yesterday I was out in the night market trying to buy some food and there was this food stall and this, there's this like inside joke that I'm starting to pick up on and it's really, really funny to me and I'm laughing along. The, the customer service employees, usually they really exaggerate the sir and ma'am. I don't know if it's to be funny, to be respectful, to just engage with people. But this one girl yesterday, man, she was like really, really emphasizing. She was like, hello, mom. Like instead of saying ma'am, right? So she kept saying that. It was really hilarious to me. And people were just like, they recognize that too. So uh, my last extension took only 15 minutes. Yes, Rick, Rick, that's right. Mine took about the same. There was nobody there. I was in and out like faster than the grocery store sometimes. So extension here, that's another thing. Don't pay for ex visa agencies. There's no need. Man. Just go into an immigration office. You fill up half a form. You pay the money and you get out immediately. Just take your passport with you, your address, of wherever you're staying, and that's all you need. Uh, White says, what would you say the best part of Thailand would be? If you're talking about geographically speaking, which part, uh, Phuket is nice because it's close to several different islands. Uh, you definitely have to check out the southern part of Thailand. Uh, Phuket area has so many different islands that you can visit. And um, it's still got the big city if you want to be like part of the nightclubs and the bars and all that. But it's got some beautiful beaches near Phuket. Um, uh, Koh Samui, Koh Lanta, and the Koh Panyang, whatever, those little islands that are there. So it's very nice over there. And Weiss says, if you had 10 days, what would you prioritize? Hmm, good, good point. I'm different, so I don't drink or party that much, so it might be different for you. But don't spend more than two days in Bangkok. Honestly, you don't need more than two days in Bangkok. A one day in Pattaya, two days in Pattaya, if you really want to see the, the world's biggest red light district. And the rest of the days, I'd say to go down south to Phuket and experience some of the beautiful beaches down there. Now, if you want more of a nature, hiking, mountains kind of thing, go to Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai in the north and to the, like the elephant sanctuaries. Although I, I'm against those things, no matter how safe or humanitarian they say they are, there's no elephants in the world, I think, that is humanitarian. So forget about all that. But yeah, um, for sure. So go ahead and definitely do that. And then you can go check out some of the southern parts and that's it. Uh, it's nine 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 to be a Thai private jet. One four nine nine says nine nine per month on the membership site. Really? That's weird. I guess you guys are getting a deal <laughs> until I fix it. So if you guys want to get up on the nine 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 nine, apparently there's a fifty dollar discount right now. Um, I had no idea. Maybe it's uh, I'm not sure why that is. Mm, yeah, I have no idea. But thank you for bringing that to my attention. I'll take a look. Uh, Willie Hernan, Alice, can you post your PayPal account so I can donate towards your channel this way versus via YouTube? Yeah, thank you, Willie. Um, good point. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I think I have this in my description. But if you guys want to donate directly, uh, my PayPal, because right now, if you're doing it through pay, uh, YouTube, you're, I'm losing about 30 to 40%. Whatever you guys send, YouTube takes that much of it. If you guys want to donate directly, it's Canadian Tefl Teacher at gmail.com. Here's my PayPal account. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and use the super chat, super stickers right now, go ahead and do that. That'll be appreciated too. If not, I'm gonna go ahead and read number four, guys. So mistake number four that people make, they put all the eggs into one basket. So what do I mean by that? Before coming to the Philippines, many foreigners are coming here for one specific girl they're talking to online. So, or they're coming here for one specific location they want to go. They want to be living in Boracay, let's say, for example. Or they come here for one specific reason. So they put everything, all the energy, all their resources, all their mindset into one thing. But you have to be prepared for that not to work out. I don't care if you're talking to a girl for two years and the day of the meet, she probably, she might not show up. <laughs> so if you put everything into like one thing, and it's nothing to do with you. Maybe they're shy. Maybe they lied to you and scammed you the whole time. Maybe they're, there's hundreds of reasons. They're, regardless, don't put all your eggs into one basket because things don't work out the way you plan in life. And you have to have some sort of alternative uh, reasoning when you come here. So don't put all your eggs into one basket. I can't stress that enough. They'll come here specifically one person, one place. You have to be able to adapt. In the Philippines, you have to be flexible. 
So you have to be able to adjust your daily routine, your plans. Um, so don't put everything into one basket. That's a mistake a lot of foreigners make when coming here. Philip Massey says, I'm wondering if my biggest reason to come to the Philippines for the benefit it offers to escape from the U.S. Either way, I guess I'm not getting any younger. Philip Massey. One thing that a sad reality, a lot of us, not a lot, but some of us are not going to make it to retirement age. Like we, ha we all have this assumption that we're going to be alive at 75 or 85. You, you never know what can happen to you or your life, right? People sometimes pass away for like natural reason without even being aware that they're suffering through something or maybe there's an accident. My point is you can play it safe and still fail in life. So why not take a risk and come here and just get away from the stressful life that you're living? Come here for a month. Come here for two months. Try it out for, for a week, two weeks. Not a week. That's too little. I'm not going to lie. Don't come here for a week. <laughs> so a minimum two weeks, but definitely more than a month if you can. Come here, explore, live like you would if you were retired here and see if it's a type of lifestyle that you want. So, yeah, definitely take the leap, man. I would highly recommend anyone considering moving from the Western way of thinking to just do it. Rick, Rick, one thing that drives me crazy is when you buy some, some uh, they have to test it to work. Uh, from lights and bulbs to refrigerators, it's nuts. Uh, I haven't personally experienced that, but that's a great tip. Rick, Rick, you're right. So if you go to the store and you want to buy a light bulb, they will probably test it there to make sure it works, and then they sell it to you. I guess that's a good thing, but I think the return policy, the refund policies are very different in the Philippines than they are back home. I can buy something from Walmart, use it for like 13 days, and then return it, no question asked, and I can say, I don't want it, you know, whatever. Same with pretty much any store in Canada. The return policy exchange policy is very favorable to the consumer. I don't think that's the case over here. So yeah, that's something that annoys Rick Rick when it comes to uh, stuff here. Um, let me go ahead and address the Wanks the Sweet Sugar Bear. Good morning, living abroad. Good morning. Welcome to the channel. Uh, next question from Waste. Would you say the quality of food better than Canada? Quality of food? Probably. I think things are a lot less processed over here. You know, you can go straight to the farmers and even because when I buy apples, for example, as soon as I cut that bitch, like two minutes later, sorry, excuse my language, it's brown immediately. <laughs> like so, and there's, there's no wax feeling on the fruit that you might find in, in Canada. The bananas, you better eat it right away. They're going straight to being too ripe. So I think that's being applied to everything you eat. Even the meats, the color of the meat is like looks different in Canada. I think they just have a lot less processed foods over here. Uh, so everywhere in Southeast Asia. So I think in that term, the food is better here. I think vegetarians have a harder time finding meals in the Philippines because it's really heavily focused on pork and meat and fish. And of course, there's vegetarian dishes available, just not as much as some other places maybe, or you just got to know where to go to get it. Uh, Wax the gummy bear or sugar bear saying hello to everybody. All right, guys, let's take a break here for a second. We have 65 people live on the channel. Please feel free to ask your questions, like the video, subscribe if you're new to the channel, consider becoming a member. We went over all that stuff. And we'll get to number five, the five, the fifth mistake people make when coming to the Philippines. So mistake number five is they, they like splash money. So as Willie mentioned earlier, people that come here, they are on this like, amazing high of being in a new country, new place, cost of living is cheaper than their own country. So the, what they do, they start to like splash money everywhere as far as over tipping, over paying, paying for things that they shouldn't be paying for perhaps. And that can have a really negative impact on not only yourself, the people around you and the locals, right? So it's okay to give back to the community. It's okay to spend a little bit of money. It's okay to enjoy yourself, but when you overdo it, it's really negatively hurting everything. So let's say you're here and you're on a date and you're flashing too much money. And now that she has the expectation moving forward, right? And at some point, the honeymoon phase is going to be over. Maybe you're not eating at a five-star restaurant every day, but that's what she's used to now. So maybe she has the expectation, perhaps. Maybe you're going, staying at nice luxury hotels. I doubt you're going to be doing that for the rest of your remaining of your retirement. So do not flash money in that way. And also when you overspend, expectations are getting raised from everywhere, customer service. Now they're gonna be expecting tips from everybody. Look what's happening with tipping culture in Canada. 20% tip, come on, that's ridiculous, right? They want you to tip on like 
pick up food even or just to make a payment all these things this is the result of splashing too much money so don't do that and then not only that you're drawing attention to yourself you're going to be a target there's no need for that unwanted attention you don't want to be doing that kind of thing you just you look silly as well and you're going to lose respect from the locals perhaps as well uh way said did you see a weight loss when traveling abroad i didn't particularly but some people might but because i love food and i have an iron stomach i eat everything and anything so for me i think i maybe i'm pretty much the same i didn't notice any fluctuation but i could see those having weight loss for sure because either they're adjusting their diet they're eating a little less because of the heat perhaps they're eating fresh fruit and vegetables more seafood um i know places like i keep bringing up thailand but i've been there so many times but like in Thailand, just the portion sizes are smaller, the ingredients are fresher, there's more vegetables so and the spicier food, so you're burning everything off a little bit quicker. So yeah, perhaps a little bit of weight loss. Gluten-free? <laughs> no, there isn't. Well, there's, I'm sure you could find it somewhere, but it's not in a part of the regular menu like you might see in the West. How much money would you feel comfortable walking around with? And how much would you suggest converting at a time? Does that rate fluctuate much? Um, some great questions from Weiss. Uh, I'll tell you in a second. Because I'm very aware of my daily cost of living and what I'm going to be spending, I don't walk around with wads of money in my pocket. I might walk around with like 2,000 pesos max, which is 40 to $50. And that's in case I, I need something that I wasn't expecting to buy. And so I don't walk around with a lot of money because I don't need to. Plus, I always have my credit card with me. For whatever reason, if I do need to have cash, I can simply withdraw the cash instead of just walking around with a lot of money in my pocket, a rubber band, you know? So, and converting, it depends. If you're coming here for 10 days, then yeah, I would convert some money before coming here. If you're gonna be here long term, then I wouldn't convert too much. I would simply just withdraw money from the ATM. So it really depends on your type of travel. You mentioned earlier 10 days. So at 30 baht per dollar and about 25 baht per Canadian dollar, I would maybe convert, honestly, maybe a thousand bucks. That's it for two, 10 days of living in Thailand. And if you run out of that thousand dollars and just withdraw some money from your ATM, yeah, sure, you get hit with a little bit of money, but at least uh, you're not walking out with too much money in your pocket in case you get robbed or you lose it or something like that. Oh yeah, guys, so today is Filipino Independence Day. Happy Independence Day for everybody that has anything to do with the Philippines or doesn't. I mean, I'm in the Philippines, so wish everybody Happy Independence Day through me. Um, that was number five mistake. The fifth mistake that people make here in the Philippines is that they splash money, they become a target, they uh, lose, just, I don't know, you kind of negatively impacting the people and businesses around you. Um, let's go on to number six. Oh yeah, this is a big one for me at least, in my opinion. The sixth mistake that a lot of foreigners make coming to the Philippines is they commit too early. They commit too early to a relationship. They commit too early to a location, a city or something. They commit too early to buying a house. They commit too early to renting by getting into a six month or 12 month contract. They commit too early into any of those things. I highly recommend you test out the area, you test out a relationship, you consider not buying if you don't need to or renting for a long term. Let's say you come into an area, the building is beautiful. Every, let's start with like renting, for example. Everything you could want is great, but for some reason, there's always construction around you. Maybe there's brownouts, the lights go out every day at 6 p.m. for some random reason. Maybe the water pressure is not strong enough. Maybe there are just random roaches that just shouldn't be in your apartment, even though it's new and you don't leave any food out. But every day your neighbor is a filthy neighbor and the roaches come along to your place, right? So maybe the internet's crap because of the location you're living in, you heavily rely on internet. Those are lots of reasons why not to commit to something for a long time. So that's just the rent. Let's talk about the city, right? Maybe you committed to staying in Cebu City. You come here, you realize, you know what? I can't stand the traffic in the city. I can't get around. I can't get from one place to another place without losing an hour of my day. Uh, maybe th there's too many roosters in that neighborhood that waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning. Maybe it's too far out from the nearest beach. You don't want to be taking a whole day off just to visit the beach, right? So 
when you commit too early to those things, you have no option left, or at least it's going to be very difficult to rearrange your plans. And same with a relationship. You don't want to come in here, the first person you meet, okay, let's move in together. And now something happens, you got a baby and you realize she is the wrong person for you. I'm being really dramatic here, but it does happen. I've heard many, many stories of people getting into bad relationships and you don't want that. You don't want, you come in here for a better life. You don't want to go back and backwards, right? So any of these things, do not commit too early. Many people come here that commit too early for many of those things I just mentioned. Hmm. We had this question asked, oh, 80 people watching this, guys. So before I continue to address why you tripping's question, guys, if you're new to the channel, uh, earlier I announced memberships. I'm very excited to be uh, announcing memberships. Um, East Coast Refugee and Mr. Independent have already become members of the channel. So please consider that and see what we offer, I offer through memberships. Um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you're new, feel free to use the super chat, super stickers to go ahead and ask your questions to be answered first. If not, please wait around while I go ahead through everything here. Somebody asked about um, beards. Where are we at here? Sorry, one second. Let me try to find myself. Happy Independence Day. Here we go. So why you tripping says, what do Filipinas think about guys with beards? I think generally speaking, they prefer someone with a clean shave. But the ones that do like beards, they really like the beard. So I, I know a lot of people cannot grow a full set of hair or facial hair in the Philippines. So I think it's really exotic or unique for some people here. Uh, so the ones that do like it, like it a lot. But overall, I'd say maybe, I don't know, 70 to 30%. They'd rather have a shave, but I'm just throwing out ran random numbers. I don't know. Um, Mike M says, accidentally cured my migraine. Wow. Didn't milk for, didn't milk for a month in the Philippines. Now I stopped drinking milk in Canada. Really? Huh. That's pretty cool. So I guess you were getting migraines drinking milk in Canada. Came here, didn't drink the milk. Migraines are gone. Went back home. Forget about it. You don't need the milk. Dash away the foolishness. Uh, Philip Massey says, what banks charge the least amount of conversion fees when withdrawing money? So for me, for my credit card, right now, Union Bank is the best because it allows me to withdraw 30000 at a time without... Um, so for me in the Philippines right now with my credit card, Union Bank works the best. I um, also heard that USDC is very good, but take a look at that one. Um, because here is $5 to 250 pesos every time we withdraw money. And most of the banks only allow you 10,000 at a time because they want to maximize the number of time you're drawing money out. Union Bank still does it for 30,000 at a time. That lasts me almost a month, so I don't need to draw more than once a month. So consider those two options, the Union Bank, and I've heard USBC Bank, but I don't know much about that one personally. Have you, uh, have you well, haha. why are you tripping says, I have a commitment phobia, so no chance that's going to happen to me. <laughs> hey, so you're going to skip number six for you then, why are you tripping, commitment issues, right? You know, I can relate. <laughs> commitment is not my thing for some reason. I want to be a free man, you know, try to visit different places. Rick, Rick, we had no water for 66 hours in a high-rise condo. Oh, my God. 66 hours. How are you washing your body? That's like three full days almost, right? Um, two and a half days. Um, it's crazy. 66 hours without water in a high-rise condo. Now, that is something that you have to get used to sometimes. I haven't experienced lack of water maybe just once, but they gave me notice. Luckily, I washed up before that, but... That could happen, so we prepare for that. Miss Independent to YCR, I'm 100, 200, 100 to 200 dollars. That's fine. Just make sure you go out with coins, because here in the Philippines, places, especially taxi drivers, always say they don't have change and end up paying more. Miss Independent makes an amazing point here. Always carry change. Whenever you go to 7-Eleven, a fast food restaurant. Anywhere you can break a thousand peso to get some change back, do it. Because no matter how much change you have, you're going to need it. That's exactly what Miss Independence says. You're going to need it for those places, taxi drivers, uh, maybe food delivery people. Uh, they're going to want to say, oh, yeah, I don't have any change. Because why? You're going to say, forget about it. And you're going to get a tip for it. So, yeah. Big, big advice from Miss Independent. I agree completely. So, Willie Hernandez, when you have the time, can you check your PayPal account to make sure my transaction went 
to you. Just confirming. So Willie Hernandez would like me to take a look at my PayPal account because he's gone ahead and donated some money towards my cause of creating videos in the Philippines. Um, let's see. Hmm. Where's my PayPal? I got so many apps on my phone, I just got to search it. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see what happened. Hey, -o, Willie, thank you so much. That's so kind of you. I really appreciate that. So much love and respect to Willie Hernandez. That's so thoughtful. He's paid me directly through PayPal so that YouTube doesn't take a cut. Uh, thanks again, Willie. You always ask great questions. And yeah, love the support. Um, yes, it came through. Confirmed. Thank you so much. Uh, Digo AI? D Digo Al. We, are we live now? We sure is. Go ahead and ask your questions. <laughs> so Philip confirmed that we are live. So 71 people watching this, guys. We're going to go to number seven, and we're going to answer your questions more and more. I'll have a sip of my water, and I'll get back to you right after these commercials. I lied. There's no commercials. Okay. So. <clears throat> Uh, before we go on to the next thing, Willie has a great tip about carrying money. Willie says, I carry at least 500 pesos and 20 pesos denomination when I'm there. So, yeah, that's a great tip. So that's five, that's 25, 20 peso notes to keep on you at all times because you never know uh, when you're going to need some change. So he carries at least $500 or 500 pesos in 20s, which is great. Number seven, I don't have seven fingers, but... Mistake number seven that foreigners make coming to this country, to the Philippines, that they still keep their own country mentality in their mind. They're thinking they're still in their own country coming here. The Philippines is not your country, guys. There's a lot of differences here, a lot of cultural differences, a lot of uh, just things are different. You have to get out of that mindset. You're no longer in your country. So when you bring that mindset over here, chances are you might be disappointed, agitated, aggravated. You have to remember you are in someone else's home. You have to be a guest here. You cannot be the same person you were back home. Things don't operate the same way as they do wherever you come from. So you have to be prepared for that mentally because all that does is just lead to stress, drama, trouble, and just anger. Who knows? So it does not end well when you don't have a new mentality, open-mindedness, and you come here with the same mentality. That's mistake number seven. Uh, <laughs> Lewis says, um, what is your favorite food there, by the way? So my favorite food here, my favorite Filipino food is sisig. It's just like chopped up meat, vegetables, egg on rice. It's pretty delicious. Tastes really good. But my favorite food overall has to be this little Italian place that's nearby my home, my apartment here. It's got the best brick oven pizza, a real, real like Italian chef, not chef owner. Um, that taught his staff how to make proper pizza, excellent dough, delicious sauce, real mozzarella cheese, and just fantastic. I love it. And the price is incredible for what you get. So uh, that's my favorite food here. Uh, Rick Rick, my CIBC bank gives me a good rate and pay back my ATM fees. That's great. So Rick Rick, that's another tip. When you come in here, try to see if you can get a travel credit card, some sort of banking that does not overcharge you for withdrawals, transactions, foreign exchange fees, all that jazz. So maybe take a look at that if you come here long term because it's going to make a difference to your trip and how much money you're spending. Okay, we're getting close to an hour, guys. We still got three more things to talk about, mistakes that people make coming to the Philippines. This live stream is going well as always. You guys are always asking great questions, supporting the channel, and feel free to continue to do so by asking some other questions. If not, we're going to continue with the seven or the last three or four things that are on my list, and we'll end this live stream if there's nothing else that we can talk about. I don't want to just ramble on for no reason. Let me turn this air conditioning back on. This morning, let me tell you guys a story. Well, it's not really a story, but what happened to me. In the AM, let's see. Oh my God. Let, oops, sorry. Bro, really? This is why he, this is ridiculous. Anyways, I woke up this morning at 5 AM at 5.30 a.m., and I couldn't fall back asleep. And I've been up doing just nothing since then. I had two cups of coffee, and for some reason I couldn't sleep. 
I think because I went to bed like an hour earlier than usual. So I don't know what happened there. Ooh, what place in the Philippines that you will never forget? I think a lot of places in the Philippines I'll never forget. I'll never forget Palawan when I went there. It was a beautiful like island, like, amazing. Puerto Princesa, El Nido, great places. I will never forget that. Um, what else when I forget? Malapasqua, beautiful. Bohol, amazing. I don't. I won't forget any of these places. Even like just Oslo, Bantay, and all the islands I've been to, incredible places for sure. I won't forget any of the places in the Philippines. And even BGC with how modern and like it was with the you know skyscrapers there and the, the restaurants that I ate at. The BGC was nice for sure. Philippines are memorable on all levels for like one hundred percent. Willie Hernandez says, also know that the forex rate is uh also know what the forex rate is when you land there. Exactly. Current US dollar to peso exchange rate is fifty six basically to one USD. Good for us, but kind of bad for the Filipino folks living there. It is a little bad for the Filipino people living here because I have noticed a rise in prices even since last year. I was here five months ago. Um, things are going up and um, it's, it's not cool for the locals, but beneficial to anyone exchanging USD. And when you know the Forex rates, then you know how much you're losing per peso when you come here, right? So if it's at 56 and someone's offering you 52 per dollar, you don't want to be exchanging that because you're losing four pesos per every single dollar they're exchanging, right? You want to get as close as you can to the 56 exchange rate before you exchange all your money. So, of course, another tip, another mistake you would make, they exchange their money at the airport. Majority of the time, 99% of the time, the airports have the worst rates possible. So always try to just have enough money to get out of the airport by having enough to get a taxi or lasting a day or two at your hotel before going to the malls or exchange booth somewhere that provides you a much, much better exchange rate. Because when exchanging $1,000 or $2,000, that does make a huge difference. Warden Trinkle says, Alex, how do I sign up to become a member of your YouTube channel? Warden, thank you for the question. Um, you simply click on this link over here, Living Abroad. I, it's the first, maybe I can link it again. Yeah, here it is. So I sent the link again. You just there's a white button on the channel. You press join, and you can choose which tier you want to be a part of and what kind of perks you want. And there's a different tier for everybody depending on your needs. And you can become a part of the channel through that. I'm excited because I get to be more of myself with the members and share all my knowledge with you guys. And if you guys want to support the channel by being a member, uh, you can go ahead and check out that link. Um, so the forex rate. Is important to know. Let's go to number eight. The eighth mistake that people make coming to the Philippines is that they have expectations. So what do I mean? A lot of times people come to the Philippines by watching YouTube videos and hearing things and just seeing things with you know rainbow colored glasses or whatever they say. Um, they come here expecting best of the best. And although it can be like that at times, or most of the time, there's still a lot of things that you may experience that you weren't expecting, right? So if you come here with high expectations, chances are you might be disappointed somewhere along the line. So the mistake that people make is give too much faith into some of the stuff they see and read online, too much weight on it. Because I know for sure there's a lot of YouTubers that say, oh, if you come here to the Philippines, Women will throw themselves at you. You're basically God's gift to women. So they come here thinking all the women want to be around them. And the reality, that's not the case. And then I just spoke with somebody a few days ago that told me the exact same thing. He said that he wasn't expecting to be so lonely here because he just thought he didn't have to do anything and women would just throw themselves at him. I'm like, bro, no proper Filipino is going to do that. You might get that from people that are looking for money or if you go somewhere where there's no foreigners. But in Cebu City... They can care less about you if you're a foreigner in some ways, right? So when you have this expectation, even like the beautiful places, all these beaches, right? If you're expecting all that, you might go to a local beach where it's like full of trash. You know, it does happen. And you might be very, very disappointed. And that kind of mindset and expectation can be applied throughout all of your stay here, right? So don't expect too much. Come here and enjoy it for what it is. Because there might be some things that 
don't look exactly like you think. There might be a little bit more of a traffic jam. There might be a little bit more poverty that you might see that you weren't expecting, so you're not quite ready for it. There might be, um, there's not so much air pollution here per se, but it might be too noisy for you some places, or the beaches might be much more crowded than you thought. You know, Barakai, these popular places, there's a lot of people there, especially right now. Uh, foreigners are traveling again, so it might not be as empty as you might think. Okay, so let's go back to the comments here. Where are we at? Sorry, guys, one second. We have somebody spamming the chats, which just got kicked out. Okay. Oh, Miss Independent says also just to click the link posted. Thank you, Miss Independent. Um, you can just click the link about becoming a member of the channel. Let's go back to what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, so having expectations can maybe be a little bit disappointing if you think everything's going to be great. There might be some things that don't go your way, you know. So be prepared for that because if you're prepared, you won't be disappointed. You won't be angry. And you may not like, ruin your entire trip here. Because nowhere is perfect, and the Philippines is one of those places. Sometimes things don't work out the way you want it to work out. So, yeah, be prepared for that mentally. Now, we still have 70 people watching this. We just crossed the one-hour mark. These live streams sometimes go over two hours. Um, so we'll continue to have this conversation as long as there's uh, engagement and you guys want to see it. And there's clearly a demand for it with 70 people watching this live continuously. I'll go ahead to number nine. And um, we'll read what number nine mistake is. Um, so, Willie Hernandez says to Rick Rick, do you have to live in the Philippines to open up a Gcash account? Ah, oh, great point. I'm not sure if you have to be living here to open up a Gcash account. I haven't tried from, I haven't even tried opening one here, but from abroad. I don't know if I've seen Gcash in any other countries. Mm -hmm, man, good question. Maybe someone abroad can answer that question if they can open an account abroad hmm. no idea but number nine here's the ninth and probably the most important i don't know they're all pretty important but this one seems to be very important have savings so a, a, an important number <laughs> important number an important thing that people forget sometimes a mistake they make they don't have savings when they come here so let's say they come here, they have a budget, they spent that every month, and there's not much remaining. No, you want to have savings double the return ticket back home. So I would say realistically, between two to five thousand dollars you should have in your bank account, just in case something goes wrong, so you can just fly back home and be around resources that you need, right? Let's say you have a really, really bad medical emergency that needs to be taken care of and the Philippines might be too long or too far or who knows what the reason is. I'm just making up things here because I don't really know about the Philippines healthcare system. I'm sure it's just as good as many other countries. But uh, let's say something really bad happens, you have to get back home or you lose your job that you're working online or, or for any reason, right? Let's say you get kicked out of your home and they locked you out for some random reason. You need to have savings, guys. You can't come here with nothing in your pocket. As, as low cost of living as Southeast Asia is, it's just, I think it's ludicrous to have no savings. You might be able to get by, of course, without any savings and no, no emergencies or nothing happen. Uh, but please come here with some savings. Do not come here with no money because you never know what could happen. I, I know I've heard of homeless people that are foreigners that came to the Philippines. Maybe uh, their wife or the ex-wife or girlfriend took everything. They had no savings. They couldn't even get the embassy to help them or assist them and they had to go through YouTube channels to raise funds to try to get them back to the US uh, so things like that happen be be smart about it have some savings be sure that in case something goes wrong you do have some sort of like emergency funds so this is regarding to Gcash and your Philippine number uh, what is the legal age of consent in the Philippines I don't know Red Hat Mike and I'm not interested um, because I won't be dealing with anybody that's not of age uh, Philippine, I assume I can use my existing phone number from the U.S. if I visit for about a month, as long as I have an international plan. I believe Gcash requires a Philippine phone number. Uh, Philip Massey, yes. So if you're coming here for less than two weeks, or sorry, a month, maybe you can just use your uh, U.S. 
phone number and just pay an international monthly plan. Um, getting a phone number here is very easy. A SIM card is very easy. For $7, you can get a SIM card and a plan for a month. So unless you want to receive phone calls with your local number back in your own country, maybe you have a business, maybe you have family that can only reach you by phone number and not by WhatsApp, Facebook, or other internet-required platforms, um, maybe you have a phone number that's related to some sort of legal thing where the government has to call you, you have to keep your number, then sure, you can just do like a monthly plan. But no need to do that if you just want regular internet, let's say. You can get a SIM card. It's very cheap here in the Philippines for like about seven bucks per month. You can get internet up to three gigs and unlimited phone call and texting as well. Baron says, one of my homies told me, about a channel, or about your channel. We're driving from Fox Hill Mall, uh, watch it on my iPhone. I had to get some clothes. Oh, thanks, Baron. Welcome here. Please be safe driving. I'm glad um, to have you on the channel. Welcome, and I hope you enjoy the content. Um, Willie, thanks, Rick, Rick. And Willie also says, Willie Hernandez, when I moved to the permanently, I plan to have 30K as an emergency fund, only to be used for emergencies. Yeah, you have to have some sort of plan. This is what we were talking about earlier as well. You can't come here willy nilly and expect everything to work out perfectly. You might be in a situation where you need some emergency funds and my recommendation would be double your flight back home just in case and obviously the more the better right so minimum is what i'm saying should be about two to five thousand dollars in case something happens oh, okay so sam mccall says gcash requires a philippines number and on a philippines network okay 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 uh baron says we got a lot of filipina out here in california I didn't know, but it's good to know. So I guess a lot of uh, Filipinos out in Cali as well. And Baron says, all right, stay safe. Oh, all right, stay blessed, champ. Got to see you. Okay, for sure, man. Drive safe. We'll catch the live stream later then. All right, so that's all the comments right now. We got 80 people watching this right now. Please take a second to subscribe to the channel if you're new. Uh, hit the like button. Become a member of the channel. Use Super Chat, Super Stickers. Um, ask your questions. Whatever you got to do while well, I take a look at number nine, I'm having a sip of my water and we'll continue an hour and seven minutes. Not bad. Today is Monday. Yeah, so today's Monday in the Philippines, Monday morning at 10 a.m. And it is Independent Day. So I guess this is where when the Philippines became an independent country. I want to congratulate all my Filipinos for for becoming independent from whichever colonial country that was here at the time. I should do some more history research on, on, on the Philippines. But I'm going to go out today and see if there's any kind of events, some sort of festival, maybe live events going on, perhaps. Um, I'll research about that. And uh, we'll get to number nine. Well, actually number 10. We're at number 10 already. So that was number nine, to have savings, emergency. But before we do that, let's read Red Hat Mike's. I heard that there's a new visa requirement restriction for foreigners over three months. I have no idea. I, I keep hearing different things every month or every day, every week. And this is why it's very important to do your own research before coming here and to rely on official sources like the embassy or um, Philippines government website to see what the exact, exact requirements are before coming here. Because you don't want to be here and not have the proper documentation. You don't want to get blacklisted. You don't want to get deported. You don't want to be overstaying your stay. Sometimes it can be very pricey and costly as well. So do your research for sure. Rick Rick says, I have a back, I have a backup Canadian phone number via Magic Jack, so I can get PIN codes that need a Canadian number. Hey, that's pretty smart, Rick Rick. I wish I had done that. That's one of that's one other thing you guys should really consider. If you're gonna be a long term. You need to have something or someone to go ahead and verify um, SMS verification for your bank account, maybe for a certain app or for whatever reason, if you need authentication and you need to send a text message to a phone number that's Canadian or American and you're living in the Philippines and you don't have that. That could be an issue. Uh, it has been an issue for me. I had to find other ways of doing it. Uh, yeah, it can be a problem for sure. East Coast Refugee, one of the channel members, it says uh, Google Wi-Fi or, or Google Fi works in a lot of countries, and you don't need a swap the SIM. In many cases, it has a plan with no international fees. Good option if you travel a lot. Hey, thanks, East Coast Refugee. I think it's the first time I've heard of Google Fi. Uh, let me write that down because I would love to take a look at that 
I mean, if I'm paying some random amount of money, it might as well be to Google. I think they're pretty credible when it comes to internet stuff. So let's see. I'm going to take a look at that. Excellent tip. Uh, Google Fi, if you guys are traveling often, uh, good option. Apparently, it's got some plans with no fees. Okay, okay. James says, Alex, how are the doctors there? I haven't seen a doctor here personally, but I've heard some stories and I've heard other stories. So I heard a story of someone passing away, dying because they couldn't get to a hospital fast enough because they're living somewhere in the province. Obviously, I didn't hear the story from the person if they passed away, but somebody I think had them on their channel talking about it. Um, I just interviewed Trinidad, who's another young American. He broke his arm or wrist. But where he was staying at the time, the, the the facilities didn't have the equipment to X-ray, so he had to come back or or do an MRI or something to the to Cebu City. So he had to cut his trip short to get proper testing done on his broken wrist. So I hear different stories, but I've also heard that private hospitals here are really well equipped and they do a good job. So first-hand knowledge, I don't have too much. I've only heard things from different people. I think that is something. If you're older, if you have health issues, or if you're really concerned about your health, definitely something to look into before making a permanent move somewhere uh, within the city. So look into that. But I think overall, my quality is good enough because I haven't heard any major issues. Uh, fresh Aloha. If this is a holiday festival today in Cebu. Probably have a lot of people out today. It might be a great time to do your one-on-one -on -one interview with Filipinas, etc. I love those unscripted interviews. Thank you, Fresh Aloha. I have a lot more coming, uh, not just Filipinos, but different types of nationalities. Actually, I have so many interviews that I'm able to categorize them to what Japanese think, what South Koreans think, what Indians think, what Canadians think. So look out for those videos coming to the channel. A lot of interviews as usual. And I have some non-interview content coming, whether it's uh, how to extend your visa, shopping like a local, uh, showing us some of the mall, the biggest mall here in Cebu, which is the SMC side. So I'm working away, guys. Every day I spent editing videos, making videos, and uh, luckily I was able to launch the membership. So hopefully everything's going to go up from here. We're going up and above and beyond. <laughs> okay, let's go on to number 10. I think that's the last one I have here, or one of the last ones. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, so the number 10 mistake some foreigners make coming to the Philippines, they do not explore. They come to one city, they stay there, and they don't even bother to go take a look at this beautiful country. 7,000 islands, many of them accessible for people to visit. Take a look. If you're retired, if you don't need to work, you have some money, why stay somewhere for a long time without exploring? Take a look at all the different beautiful places up the north, the south. You know, get out there. You know, see some play. Even if you're by yourself, you don't have to be with a Filipina, for example. There's a lot of, there's a big expat community in the Philippines. Make some friends. Explore your options. Explore the islands. Explore uh, meeting new people. Explore events. Explore different foods. It doesn't make sense to come to a country and just, like, try to live exactly the way you live back home. You need to get out there and explore a little bit. So that's the 10th mistake that people make coming here to the Philippines. And I do have a bonus one uh, we're going to go to. But let's take a look at chat GPT that I asked yesterday. Uh, what it thinks is a 10, uh, <laughs> what do you call it? The 10 mistakes that foreigners make coming to the Philippines. Oh, okay. It refreshed it. So it won't be there. So I'll just type it again so we can all see. Uh, list 10 mistakes. Whoop. I can't even write mistakes. Uh, foreigners make coming to the Philippines. And you guys could tell me whose list you like better and be honest. I don't mind. So, <laughs> even Chat GPT says the one thing that everybody complains about, which I think is kind of funny. So, it has to be true, right? So, let's see what it is. Number one. According to Chat GPT, ten mistakes that foreigners make is understanding traffic. Foreigners often underestimate the traffic congestion in major cities like Manila. It's important to plan your itinerary according to the traffic. So, traffic's a big problem apparently. Neglecting personal safety. 
While the Philippines is generally a safe country, it's important to exercise caution and beware of your surroundings, especially in crowded areas and nights. I always hear about this in any major city. Pickpocketers, uh, make sure you're kind of like holding on to your stuff. You're not like flashing your phone or wall around and, you know, of course, you can get taken off and uh, stuff like that. So number three, disrespecting religious practices. The Philippines is predominantly Catholic country and it's important to be respectful of local religious practices, especially when visiting churches or participating in religious events. That's number three. Number four, failing to adapt to Filipino time. Hmm. That's one thing I didn't cover. It's important that you adapt to Filipino time. They're going to be late often. Um, Filipinos have a more relaxed attitude towards punctuality, and it's common for social events to start later than scheduled. Adjusting to concept of Filipino time can help avoid frustration. A big, big, big tip there from chat GPT. I have to agree with that one. Number five, disrespecting or disregarding local customs. Filipinos value respect, hospitality. It's important to learn about local customs, such as removing your shoes before entering someone's home or using po and oppo to show politeness. Got it. Number six, not trying local cuisine. The mistake that I make that people don't try food here. Seven, neglecting to negotiate prices. Bargaining or negotiating prices is common in local markets and certain establishments. Not attempting to negotiate can lead to overpaying. And overpacking tropical weather. Uh, the Philippines is very hot, don't overpack. Number nine, expecting fluent English everywhere. While English is widely spoken in the Philippines, especially in urban areas, not all Filipinos are fluent. Be patient and understanding. Number 10, disregarding travel advisor, advisories before traveling to the Philippines. Basically, going to places you shouldn't be going. Anyhow, boring. I like my list better, okay? Number 11 I have on my thing is entitlement. Don't come out here feeling entitled. You know, a lot of times, it's the biggest annoyance for me whenever I travel, when I see a group of people feeling entitled. Like people should be throwing themselves at them because they're foreigners, the Americans, or wherever they're from, that they have the sense of entitlement. Respect the people, don't be disrespectful, and so on and so forth. Endless River said, Doctor is good, but lack of medical equipment and facilities. Yeah, I think that's the point that should be really, really addressed is that the doctors are well educated and they are good, but sometimes the hospitals or the clinic does not have the facility or the equipment they need to go ahead and make treatment. Uh, James says, regarding that question, does safety wing accommodate private hospital or question mark? Safety wing, I think, covers you for emergency hospital admissions. I'm not sure if private or public comes into play. They do, of course, have a limit. Uh, luckily, I haven't had a chance to use them, so I don't really know. That's a great question, though, James. I'll have to take a look at that. Um, Dan says, the best private hospitals are the ones that are JCI accredited. Okay. There are only five, IRC, three in Manila area, and one in Davao, and one in Ilu Ilu. Oh, I didn't know that. So, Dan, that's some great information, guys. See, this is what we're talking about. Sometimes these comment section doesn't necessarily have to do with mistakes or something. You get some great advice from people that have been to the Philippines, that are living in the Philippines, or have done their research about the Philippines in certain areas, in this case being hospitals. So Dan's given some great point. Uh, excellent tip for sure. Thanks for bringing that up, Dan. Another great tip from Willie says, the top hospitals in the Philippines, Luzon, Manila area, St. Luke's and Makati Medical Center. In Cebu area, Cebu Doctors Medical Hospital. Their private hospital of the state uh, of the art equipment. Great to know. So, Willie, Hernan is excellent. Thank you, Dan, as well. As you guys can see, there are plenty of options. So, if you're coming here and you want to have, and don't forget, private visits here are not as costly as private visits in the US. So, of course, if you're paying out of pocket and you don't have insurance, it's going to cost you a little bit of money, but it's nowhere near as much as you would have to pay um, back home in the US. So, for sure. Gurkha9 says, what about Chung Hua, Willie Hernandez in Cebu? Do you know anything about Chung Hua? I personally don't, but maybe Willie does. And that brings us to the end of the list of the things that we have when it comes to mistakes. Of course, there's hundreds of mistakes people can make going anywhere in the world. These are 10 that I've come across when I'm doing interviews where people tell me about it or I've seen firsthand personally, or maybe mistakes that I've made myself, right? And to know these mistakes is to educate yourself and hope 
we can prevent them from happening um, in the future with travelers, with yourself, and anytime we can help somebody, why not, right? So that is it for this video, guys, as far as the top 10 mistakes go. We'll try to make this last to at least an hour and a half. We'll push another 11 minutes. Um, I'd like to remind everybody if they can take a look at becoming a member if there's something they want to consider. I made a video yesterday releasing all the information. If you haven't checked that out, take a look because it really breaks down in different tiers, the different levels, and what you get for each one of those. Um, of course, a big shout out to East Coast Refugee for becoming a member, for Miss Independent for becoming a member, for Willie Hernandez donating directly towards PayPal because he doesn't want YouTube taking some of the money. For all you guys being here watching, for you guys liking the video, subscribing, for everyone commenting, for everyone just relaxing and enjoying this live stream or listening to it, I appreciate you guys very much. Thanks for being here on this beautiful independent day in the Philippines. It's actually sunny right now. I hope it stays this way because I'm curious to go outside and see um, what's going on out there on Independence Day. <clears throat> Ms. Independence says, Gcash works great here in the Philippines. Less cash you carry, you can pay in pharmacies, restaurants, supermarkets, online shops, and easy to pay bills like electricity and phone bills, etc." Excellent point, Ms. Independent. Gcash is great. And you can even buy food at stalls, like food stalls, not even proper shops, like just outdoor, like street food. I've seen Gcash being offered. There's a phone number. You type it in, send money through Gcash. So if you're coming here long term, definitely something to consider. Uh, getting a Gcash account so you can pay for things a lot simpler and you don't have to carry money around, right? So a great tip from Miss Independent. Different countries have different payment systems um, that they are mainly using. I know after visiting so many recently, um, there's not one that stands out. Of course, Alipay or Google Pay, that's always going to be there, but not everybody has an account. Every country has a local version of these. In the Philippines, it is Gcash. Peter Huang says, at Miss Independent, so what happens if you lose your phone number or SIM card and didn't register email? How do you claim your money from your account? Hmm, good question. Perhaps you can look at their terms and services or something. Oh, yeah, fireworks. Perhaps I will go out somewhere here and see some fireworks. Rick Rick says, it should be some good fireworks tonight in Cebu. Although I don't support fireworks, to be honest, I don't believe in it. I think it should be banned in every country because we're not living in the 18th century or whatever. We've seen fireworks for how many times? And it's not fair for all the animals. The dogs get all messed up. They're panicking. And, you know, it's not good to have fireworks. Personally, I don't believe in that. I, I don't agree with it. Uh, Willie says, uh, when I was on vacation there this year, I didn't notice, or I did notice quite a few foreigners having the entitlement are all about them. It was a bad look and embarrassed for them. Yeah, it's embarrassing for them, right? So when you have this mentality of feeling entitled, it really sets it. Like when I was, when I travel and when I see people have that kind of attitude towards either restaurants, cafes, lounges, uh, usually they have this like arrogant entitlement sense or in line or at grocery stores or at immigration. I don't like it. It just looks bad on, on foreigners, on travelers, and it's just embarrassing. And you're being disrespectful for the people that are, you know, there. Dan says, Gcash works with some taxis and Panda drivers too. Oh, interesting. I didn't know about that. Good to know. Gcash is huge in the Philippines, says Peter. I see it everywhere. But at the same time, I see a lot of complaints online about people losing their phone number and info and they lose money from their account. Okay, okay. So I guess that comes down to personal responsibility. Uh, I guess you got to be really careful using Gcash to not lose all, any of those things. But if you got money in bank account and you lose your card, you can always get a new card and such. Makes sense. Uh, Willie responds to Gurkha. Not sure. I'm going to have to do some research on the Changhua Hospital. Thanks for the inquiry. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Journey with our miracle Premi says, uh, I live here in Bohol, and my experience is you need to go to a local doctor, and they can usually refer you to a good private doctor in the hospital. So another tip. Visit your local doctor, which will then go ahead and direct you towards a great private doctor. So once again, lots of different things you can do in the Philippines. I just don't think there's anything here that would deter me, at least, for being here. All these mistakes are avoidable. 
it come down to the individual and lack of research, lack of, you know, personal accountability sometimes. Uh, I think it's good to talk about these things just to remind people that um, the Philippines is amazing, but sometimes you just got to do your due diligence coming here. Uh, just because, you know, somebody makes a mistake doesn't mean you have to. We can all learn from each other, right? So. Northern BC Life says, I agree with you with the fireworks. Yes, animals get scared to death. Literally, exactly. All the funds could be better spent. Let's learn to celebrate in a more active way. Yeah, fireworks seem ridiculous to me. Of course, when I was younger, yeah, cool, but I was not educated on the matter. Now that I'm older, I'm against fireworks. Gcash is my backup payment method for the occasional drivers who claim they don't have change. Ha, ah, damn. I like that. So... Sometimes I'll tell you my personal, actually, I don't do that, but it's good to have that as backup, exactly. Because when the driver claims they don't have change, I'm like, bro, really? That's your only job. All you have is probably change. And you're saying you don't have change, it's, it's rubbed me the wrong way. Because, um, yeah, sometimes I'm, I'm staying at home and if I'm ordering food, I was obviously not prepared to have exact change for you, right? So at that point, then I make sure I find exact change, then they lose their tip, right? So let's say, my meal comes to 360 and I say, give me back a hundred. If I give them 500 and say, oh, I don't have change. Then I'll make sure I have 360 somewhere that way they lose out on 40 peso tip. I know I'm evil, right? <laughs> Peter says, getting a hundred K gift from YouTube. Wait, what happened here? Uh, Peter says, getting a 100,000 gift from YouTube for silver play gift for a million gold play gift. Can you sell it to make money if someone is low on money? I don't know who would want to buy that, but if you guys don't know what Peter's talking about, so if you have 100,000 subscribers, Google sends you a plaque for 100,000. It's a silver one. For a million, I think it's a gold one. I don't think it's real silver or real gold. So I don't know. Maybe you could sell it. I don't know who wants to buy my living abroad plaque if I get one. Uh, <laughs> interesting. Uh, Miss Independence talking about the Gcash and if you lose your phone number or SIM card. You can call customer service or visit their office. Okay. Peter also says to Dan, on the ad, that's true. You can give the 1K and fares 800. It's a hassle. I end up giving them all and say it's okay, especially when you're rushing somewhere. Yeah, another big tip, guys. Make sure you have change with you at all times. You don't want to overpay, over tip, and spend a lot of money when you don't have to. So. Christopher, that's a good question, but I think a long answer from my side of things. Uh, I've, I've said this several times on the channel. I don't want to bore people, but honestly, it comes down to your living expectations, your li life standards, and what you spend your money on. Uh, I've mentioned this several times, so I won't go over again, but I'm going to make a proper breakdown of the cost of living in the future, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Uh, Willie Hernandez, I use Gcash or Grab. I use Grab when I'm there. I have the cash. I'll pay cash. If I don't, then I'll just pay with my credit card that's tied to my Grab account. Yeah, another excellent point. You can just simply tie your credit card to your Grab account, but that's just Grab, right? Gcash can be pretty much used for a whole slew of things, but for definitely for Grab, that's a great idea. You simply just use the credit card if you don't have proper cash on you. Rick Rick pays 500 pesos for a prescription. Is that the going rate? I don't know. I have no idea. Anybody can confirm how much you pay for per prescription for medication? That's 500 pesos, a different price. I don't know. Okay, so two more minutes. Actually, one more minute, and we can end this. I don't have anything else we've written as far as mistakes we can make. We can all learn from. Regardless, the Philippines is an amazing country, beautiful places to see, incredible people. And definitely a must-visit place if you've never come here before. And if you have come here, then you can go ahead and concur and agree with what I say. Um, Peter says, when are the members' fee active and available? Peter, is active and available now, my friend. Feel free to take a look. And if you're interested, um, sign up depending on the perks that you want. And you simply just have to click that link, and it'll take you straight to the membership's page. Oh, Willie's here. 500 is the going rate for consultation. Willie from Wonderless Asia says about 500 for the rate, for the consultation, for the doctors. And James says, um, 
that plaque is more for success and more of a sentimental piece, not for resale. Yeah, if that was the case, I would open YouTube channels and spam to get 1,000k subs and sell and be rich. Wishful thinking, James. It's not wishful thinking. It, it comes true sometimes. You know, I when I started this channel, I, I had no idea that I'll be at 4, 80. What am I at? 84,000 subscribers right now. Um, I was just trying to make some videos to remember my life, and you guys have been so wonderful supporting the channel for the past two years now. I might go on three years. I don't even know. Definitely at least two years. Yeah, two years. Um, you guys are wonderful, and I had no idea I'd even this close to a silver plaque. Willie says, when's the meetup? Yeah, so if you guys are in Cebu, the meetup was is next Monday. So a week from now, we're going to have a meetup. Is that the one the meetup is? 18, 19. Yeah. So Monday. The 19th, let me just double check that before I screw that up. So the Living Abroad official meetup is Monday the 19th at 1 p.m. at 1 Nido. Uh, I have it on the community tab. And I'm going to repost it when it's closer to that date. If you guys are near Cebu, you want to come say hello in person, uh, have something to eat at that bakery or the rest of the bar that we're going to be at. Um, it's free event, of course. So you can come and say hello. I'll talk to me about anything. Maybe you've been a fan of the channel. If you're in the area of Cebu City, come and say hello for our first official Living Abroad meetup. I'm excited. I'm curious to see who shows up. If anybody is in the area, that'd be awesome. Hey, Bay Area UAV. What's up? Not much. We're just talking about 10 mistakes people make coming here. Um, Willie says to Rick, Rick, it depends on what your prescription is. Um, I'm sure it's cheaper in the Philippines versus the Western part of the world. Yeah, it's 100% cheaper here compared to the West. Whatever you need, prescription, medication, all that stuff, doctor visit, clinic visit, x-rays, urine samples, uh, medic uh, shots of any kind you need, it's going to be cheaper here. Miss I-N-D-E, Miss Independence says, yeah, in the private hospital. That's right. Be the next Linus. I don't know who that is. Who is Linus? Sounds familiar, though. Peter says, is your main home going to be Cebu or you'll be going to Manila for a change? I think it's going to be Cebu. I think if I go to Manila later for whatever reason to visit a week or so, and if I somehow come across an area which I find comfortable living, I'm open. Honestly, I'm open to it. I don't know, 100%. Um, I'm just living week by week right now. I have no plans as far as locations. But I would love to ideally have the financial means of just visiting all the places here. I don't need to rent a place for a month to reduce the cost of accommodation. So ideally, the goal would be to stay somewhere for a week at a time. One week of Ilu, Leyte, Davao, Mindanao, like freaking Luzon, all these places. I like to visit Boracay. And of course, when I go to these places, I can show you guys what it looks like. I can show you the beaches, the peoples, the interviews local restaurants cafes so big big dreams for the channel so yeah we'll see what happens fresh aloha says hi buddy maybe write a book about your wonderful traveling journey it will be add value to your channel and feature uh, future endeavors i will be fresh aloha i will definitely consider writing an ebook and a downloadable digital content that's going to be on the channel as well mainly informative stuff so how you guys can do what i'm doing how you can live and how you can rent and how you can travel uh, how you can start a youtube channel whatever that i think people might find value in i'll go ahead and post that on the channel as well philip says hey alex would love to see you drive a scooter hope you ever try it out i mean palm was the driver uh, she drove me everywhere she tried to teach me but i crashed the motorbike so uh, i'll try <laughs> peter says isn't cebu for the foreign capital of the philippines and people go cebu to be connected near foreigners when going to the philippines to get away from but was but connected near foreigners. I don't know. I have no idea. I thought Dumaguete was. There's a lot of people living there. I think Cebu is popular because of the international airport that's here. Um, but I have no idea. Um, just be aware. I've heard of fake medication there. You're much better off to improve your health by identifying the root cause of your health conditions. Yeah, of course, ideally, I think you're right for sure to try to figure that out and be careful of medication where you get it from and if it's like legit. A Bay Area says Linus is a fellow Kanaka from Linus Tech Tips. Oh, okay, cool. Good to know. I had no idea. But so an hour and a half, 
I think we covered all the areas. If you guys don't have any additional questions about either the topic today, any random questions you have about the Philippines, about traveling, if you have questions about specifics of the memberships that I launched yesterday, uh, feel free to ask. I'm going to stick around for another little bit. If there's no other questions, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. Um, yeah, so what am I going to What am I? What am I going to do after this? So my plan for today, maybe I'll take it easy today, but I think because Independent Day, there might be an opportunity to go and interview some people. Perhaps some people come across or came here from outside of town. Might be interested to get their perspective on things. I'll get out there. I'll see what's up. Maybe take a look around. Yeah. Say hello to Sunshine Show. Yeah, I seen Calvin two weeks ago. I'll say hello to him. Oh, by the way, guys, Calvin, man, I don't know. Listen, that guy might not be for everybody, right? Maybe he says it too straightforward, too honest. Maybe he comes across as, um, how can I say, too direct or whatever. But he's still a good man. Like, I, I've known him for over a year, and I met him several times, and I don't think he means any harm. But right now, his channel and his himself is going through a whole ton of nonsense as usual people making false accusations and him having to defend himself so if you're coming here and you do become successful whether just personally on youtube or whatever be prepared for some idiots out there that just can't stand to see someone succeed they just can't stand to see somebody be happy or just want to cause havoc when there isn't like they're really accusing him of some ridiculous things that are really serious accusations so and i know that's not correct or true so yeah but he's a good man i think and uh, i wish him all the best peter said what travel agency do you use and you should partner with them for new people who's going to philippines vacation and use them and you get a commission that's a great tip peter um i don't use any travel agencies but i definitely should reach out to them right because i do have a huge audience that are interested in the philippines so that's a great tip. Uh, thanks, Peter. I'll take a look. Why are you tripping? I'd be curious what Filipinos think is the biggest mistake foreigners make. Could be a good street interview topic for your next video. Excellent. See, this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to take his advice. And he's not even like a paid member, right? The YouTube memberships I announced. This is the type of stuff I'm talking about. So if you become a member, you get to dictate what kind of video I make. It doesn't even have to be interviews. Maybe you want to see like a nearby island or something but great tip why are you tripping thank you so much i'll go ahead and see if i can make a video based on that sounds really interesting to me right filipino foreigners <laughs> biggest mistake that's a good one okay 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 aaron Paul says how is the nightlife and the bars out there I hear they're great. I'm not part of it, but from my understanding, there's like a, there's a rooftop lounge right there at uh, Avenir Verified. There's a, what do you call that place? Damn, my mind just went blank. Uh, Icon, yeah, there's a club down down there, like 300 meters from me, Icon. There's 80th Avenue next to this building, and I, that's just the one that I can see right now. So nightlife is booming out here. It's, it's nice if you're into that. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's out here. It's great. You could definitely enjoy yourself. Could you do a very brief recap of the 10 mistakes expat make in the Philippines? Sure. Why not? Let's do it. That's a great, 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 great idea. So here are the 10 mistakes that foreigners make when coming to the Philippines. Number one, they come here without a plan. Number two, they don't do enough research on visa requirements, document requirements, passport requirements, uh, e-declaration all these different things, right? So they need to do proper research and be ready to have everything in order when it comes to documentation. Uh, number three, they don't sort out their banking, their pay subscriptions and other things they have back home that need to make sure they're ended. So number four is uh, they put all the eggs into one basket. They don't have any alternative reason to be here, any backup plan, no plan B. They put all their faith into either a relationship or one simple thing and they need to have a backup if that doesn't work out or pan out. Number five, they splash money. The big mistake of people just splashing money uh, in the relationship, at restaurants, and just a way of living, because that's not gonna last if you behave that way. Uh, number six, they commit too early, committing to a relationship, to a home, a city, and they 
without knowing all about that place. So they commit far too fast into all that. They need to give themselves time. Number seven, they keep their mentality the same as their home country. They don't recognize their guests in the Philippines, that they are not going to be doing everything the same as back home. And so they have the same mentality. They need to be open-minded. So number eight is expectations. They have high expectations of everything working out. Uh, they don't basically factor the fact that things may not go exactly as expected. So they need to go ahead and have realistic expectations about everything that's related to life in the Philippines. Number nine, the make, big mistake they make, they don't have savings. They don't have money in case something goes wrong, emergency to fly back home, medical bills or something. They need to have savings. The more savings you have, obviously the better. That's the number nine mistake. They don't have savings. Number 10, biggest mistake people make, they don't explore. The Philippines is a wonderful country to be explored with 7,000 islands, different places, types of cuisine, uh, people, friends. They, they need to explore all facets of life in a whole new country, not just stay at the same place for the rest of their days. You know, you have to explore these places. And number 11 as a bonus is the sense of entitlement. That's a mistake. Nobody owes you anything in the Philippines, you know, So or any country when you visit. I've seen people in Thailand acting a fool. They think people should just, you know, throw themselves at them because they're foreigners or they spend money and they think they, they deserve a certain thing. No, lose that mindset, entitlement thinking. And that's the 11 things, mistakes that foreigners make in the Philippines. Tops Keith says Metro Manila still has the most foreigners next to either Anhal City or Dumaguete City. Yeah, I think that sounds more reasonable and right to me. I've always heard about those places and the sheer size of them and everybody just going to those places. Uh, Lewis says, have a good day there. Yeah, Calvin is a, a good dude. Too many haters out there. I agree for sure. Peter says, yeah, I'd love to know what Filipinos don't like about foreigners is when... We are too direct to them, or do they need to smile more? Okay, probably a question I can ask. Aaron, my brother, I was out there last month. Okay, cool. How was it? Yeah, great question about that thing I wrote down earlier, about the next content. So Aaron says, they told me, they told my, anyways, they told me a snake in the grass is racist on blacks and brown skin panes. I don't get it. <laughs> Basically, you're thinking some of them are racist. Good work, tripping. Yes, good work. Uh, Wanderlust Asia, a friend's new bar for great live music is Fiddlers at Ramos Street. Good local crowd and some foreigners. Good to know. Willie, thanks for sharing that. So whoever's in the Cebu area, check out Fiddlers at Ramos Street. Um, Aaron says, Alex, you... <laughs> Alex, need you see some more thick curvy panes, Alex. I'll try to find them and I'll put them on the channel. Walang Anuman. Not sure what that is. I wish I could spoke Tagalog for Cebuano, Messiah. When going to the Philippines for a visa country, is it still a hassle where you need to be full vaccinated, registered, a whole bunch of things just to enter? I know you don't have to be vaccinated to enter the Philippines. I know that for sure because I spoke to someone that got rejected entry into Indonesia and was accepted into the Philippines. Um, so it's still a lot easier than some other countries, but there may still be some restrictions. I'm not really up to date with requirements. Uh, why are you tripping? Did you say what the chat GPT top 10 was already? Sorry, I had to step up for a few minutes. Yeah, I did already. Sorry, bro. I'm not going to go over it again. It's somewhere along the line in this chat. Um, but you know what? Just for you and others that just missed it. How about this? You guys like the video, press the like button or subscribe to the channel or whatever, and I'll go ahead and read the top 10 chat GPT things, mistakes that foreigners make. It says, here are the 10 mistakes foreigners make in the Philippines. Underestimating traffic, neglecting personal safety, uh, disrespecting religious practices, failing to adapt to Filipino time, disregarding local customs, not trying local cuisine, neglecting to negotiate prices, Overpacking for a tropical weather, expecting fluent English everywhere, and disregarding travel advisories. 
I mean, I got a very different list, but some good stuff in there. Alex, are you known in your community there now in the Cebu City? Uh, yeah, I'm like a celebrity, bro. Uh, Jane, before I get into that, guys, we have 70 people watching this, so show some love. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Use a super set, super set, super chat, super stickers. And if you're new, we were just talking about memberships. Feel free to consider memberships. If that's something you want, where I offer additional perks. But going back to James' question, am I known in Cebu? Yeah, I am. I think I get recognized like once every other day now, at least, if not multiple times a day. But a lot of it has to do with the fact that I pretty much go around the same areas making interviews. So a lot of people have noticed me either to the channel or just through me being out there. Like yesterday when I was at the food market, somebody recognized me, but that's because I was wearing my shirt, my YouTube living a broad shirt. I was out all day making a video, so they recognized me. Um, but it happens quite often now. I think Cebu people have recognized me, even some like Filipinos that don't usually, like a lot of my viewers are Westerners, but yeah, Filipinos also recognize me, so it does happen. Um, Aaron Paul says, Alex, my brother, told me a lot of haters hate him because he's trying to leave the street and turn his life around. But people who live that life want to understand the South Central life if they've never been there. Look, man, we all got pasts. Nobody's perfect. This man is out here trying to make a difference in his community. He's giving back. YouTube is, is the way he earns his living. I don't understand why people just can't accept the guy for who he is and what he's doing. If his content is not for you, buddy, move on. Don't watch it. People talk shit about me too. I don't sit there all day crying about it or focusing on it. If I don't like somebody's face, I simply change it or go to another channel. Like it's, I don't know. People will get so offended and take it so personally. I, I can probably say like a few things on this live stream alone that somebody probably doesn't agree with. But that's okay to disagree with something. Just because I believe in every like, stuff that I'm saying doesn't mean necessarily you should believe it. Opinions are that. It's someone's personal opinions, right? If you don't agree with it, just don't agree with it. It doesn't have to mean go ahead and report the guy for some ridiculous stuff or just throw shade at him or some nonsense. So, yeah, I agree. Uh, Northern BC Life says, thanks for the brief summary of the mistakes. I joined your live late this morning. No problem, bro. Feel free to rewatch it if you like. But those were the mistakes that I went over, and ChatGPT's mistakes is recommended. So Rick Rick says, I want to take my Filipino girlfriend to Canada and need a visa to do that, but needs a U.S. visa because of con connecting flights to get to Toronto. That's so annoying, right? So what she can do, apparently it's a new thing now that Filipinos holding a U.S. visa in the past 10 years or a Canadian visa in the past 10 years can simply fill an online form, don't need a Canadian visa anymore to visit. So what I recommend, either obviously change the flight or see if she can get a U.S. visa, which I know is difficult, or you guys meet somewhere else. I know you want her to see Canada, but I'm trying to think what the best option would be. I honestly don't know, bro. That's That sucks. I hope it works out and keep us posted and updated what's going on with that. My brother, 31, I'm 28 years old. Okay, you guys are still fairly young. Stop working and live in the Philippines instead. <laughs> um, Bay Area UAV says, ever see drones out there in the Philippines? Not so much, but I don't know what the drone laws are here. But I haven't seen, I mean, they sell them here. So if you really, really want to bring a drone, just like buy one here, I guess, if you have the money for it. Palm Beach, Florida. Alan's here from Palm Beach, Florida. Welcome. Aaron Paul says, my re my relative from down south, but I was born and raised out in the west coast. Okay, so Aaron's giving us some geography about where he was born and where his relative is living at. Living Abroad says, well, that's me. I don't have to read my own link. Um, <laughs> uh, Margie's here. Hello, Alex. I'm watching here in Hong Kong. Visit Baguio City someday, and I don't forget to roam around. Visit the Igorot Stone Kingdom. And many more. Thank you, Margie. I do plan to visit uh, Baguia, hopefully. I, I can't wait to visit a lot of places. Louis says, shout out to all the OF, uh, off foreign workers, offshore foreign workers. I've been friends with many over there, over the years. Yes, a lot of Filipinos working around the world. Come to Baguia City. I can't wait. Miss Independence says, tips for the foreigners who would like to travel different. 
places in the Philippines, make sure to do more research in the places before making reservations. Read some reviews who already visit the place. Another great advice from Miss In The Pen, that's true guys, always look at the reviews, and not just the reviews, but the dates of the reviews. When was this review made? Was it from three years ago? Was it recent? Was it two weeks ago? Look at the reviews. A lot of times, I don't know about the Philippines specifically. Actually, I do know about the Philippines because Palm experienced this twice when she traveled here by herself. She made a reservation through Agoda, but um, when she got there, the room wasn't available. I guess they wanted more money or something. So do your research. Make sure you, you understand everything about the place before you reserve something. And I recommend not to make reservations for long periods of time. Book a place for one day, two days. Maybe you don't like the place. If you enjoy, you probably could pay cash for even much lower rate at the hotel itself. So yeah, keep that in mind. Do you recommend any good hikes? I am not a hiker. I do not know. Um, Miss Independence also says most common problems is Wi-Fi not working, air condition, hot shower. That's important for travelers and know how much the regular fare. Less expectations, less disappointments. Perfectly said. Yes, some things you have to consider. Not a lot of places in the Philippines have a hot shower, and uh, I mean the major cities are getting more and more. I think, but a lot of the smaller towns and islands don't really have hot shower. Be sure the air condition and the Wi-Fi is working. Those are important to you. So yeah. Do some research before you get disappointed. Good night, Alex, says James. Be safe. Yes, thank you guys all for being here. One hour and 51 minutes. Hello. That's a long time. We're doing this. I guess these lives are working. You guys are enjoying it. I'm going to continue to put these out as scheduled regularly. We said Saturday morning, Monday morning, and Thursday evenings. So what's next on my videos to be released? Let me share that with you guys. So. Today is Monday. Tomorrow, which is Tuesday, I'm going to sit down with a young American study, study, studying here in the Philippines, and he's got his own YouTube channel too. Let's find out his experience, and it's a bit different than from all the older guys that we see on YouTube. And uh, so kind of cool to get a 21-year-old's perspective about life in the Philippines. I'll have a sit down with him and ask him some questions. Uh, oh, yeah, that's another great point. Dan says, and look at the nationality of the viewer. Filipinos in general have expectations easily met or exceeded. Yes, that's very important. So sometimes somebody might get very good reviews, but their standards might be a little bit lower, right? So a lot of times people, I, have, I hate to say it, but sometimes Filipinos, they... If something is subpar, they accept it anyways because they're such kind people. They're so carefree. So you may not think it's up to par, but sometimes they might think it's just fine. You know, they could live almost anywhere. So to them, oh, it's a nice bed. But you might think, you know what, the, the sheets might be need to change or something like that. So um, Dan's saying to look at the nationality of the commenter or the reviewer to get a better understanding of, like, the quality of the place. Aaron says, why hate us in the chat? Fool, we know it's south. We say south. <laughs> that way lingo and all that, James. Leave me alone. Aaron, all good. No haters here. People just trying to be helpful correcting your spelling. Um, but I knew what you meant. That's all that matters. <laughs> uh, Mad says, I just come across. Oh, okay. Mad's Life or Leaf says, just came across your channel and subscribe. Please come to Baguio too or to Banoe. If you go to Banawe, I can recommend you a nice place to stay. Thank you. Thank you for that, Maz. Thank you for being new to the channel and subscribing. Much love and appreciation. We have a nice community here. And, um, yeah, thank you for inviting me to those places. I'll definitely consider them. I would love to visit. And Aaron Paul says, Alex, bye. See you next time. See you guys. All right. So should we try to push the two hours to make this a nice even number? I, you know, me and even numbers. I got a weird thing. So one hour, 53 minutes, okay? I'm surprised today I didn't drink lots of water even though I talked for almost two hours usually by now my throat is like drying up but it's great it's great to see today's crowd being here asking some wonderful questions and commenting and you guys have been really really helpful to keep the stream going and um, I'm very very excited to see where this channel goes I got to sit down with Trinidad that's being released tomorrow and then my next video after that will be, actually, no. 
Actually, yeah. Or no, I don't know. The next video will be Friday night. So tomorrow is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday night, I'm going to do a video about shopping like a local. I'm going to go out there and try to see if I can shop like a local. I don't want to shop at grocery stores. I'm going to go to an open market, Cebu's biggest open market. And as usual, I'm going to talk to the locals, interact with them, and show you guys my experiences. Uh, Willie says to Dan Corrin, that's the local Filipinos, so you can't place all Filipinos in that category. Yes, very true. Uh, but, Willie, your flag might be different, though, about the review. You may have an American flag next to your review. Um, I agree with both of you guys. The, once again, guys, this is all generalizing. Not everybody's going to be the same. And there are some, like, people that are completely outside the box, but just general statements. You both make some great points. Um, that's true. Uh, Rick Rick said most places in the Philippines, you can Facebook message them. That's true. Um, Philippines, Facebook is huge in the Philippines, right? So it's the biggest social media platform there is. A lot of businesses use Facebook. I was trying to send out some emails, and when I was looking at contact lists of these hotels, um, most of them had Facebook as the primary contact page. So they don't really need it because, like, they don't need a website because Facebook is so popular here. All right, so four more minutes. We're running out of things to talk about. Uh, Gen Z is here. Hi, Alex. I just woke up. Nice seeing you live. Thank you. Thank you. Ask any questions you have. We're here talking about 10 mistakes that people make when traveling the Philippines. I'm trying to think of any additional mistakes. That's basically it. I think just be prepared, well educated on the topic, and um, just enjoy. Like these are things to make your trip here much more enjoyable. So when you're coming here, I think knowing all these mistakes and try to avoid some of them, if not all of them, could definitely make your stay much more enjoyable. All right, one minute, 56 seconds. I'm going to try to drag this on a little bit longer. Huh? Let's see if we can do it. Uh, Lewis is saying hello to Jen. What else we got going on here? Go to Baguio. I hear Baguio's weather is a little cooler, so I'll try to get out there. Why not, right? I don't know if I could fly there or take a boat, a ferry. Speaking of ferries, I mentioned this earlier. Somebody said don't ever take the overnight ferries regardless of the class here in the Philippines because they woke up with like roaches crawling all over them. <laughs> roachy, roachy, roachy. Uh, Manny is here with a bunch of emojis. Thank you so much. Willie Hernandez says, good live stream, Alex. Have a great day, evening, everyone. Willie Hernandez, thank you for being as always. Appreciate the questions. And um, see you guys in the next one. So two and a half minutes. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do, even if there's no viewers, we're going to push for another two and a half minutes because I like even numbers. I don't even have OCD, but for some reason when it comes to numbers, I like rounding up or rounding around. Dan says, local Airbnb reviews in particular are a problem for foreigners with high expectations. Excellent point, right? So sometimes you get to see these pictures on Airbnb and the reviews and everything looks good. When you get there, you're like, oh, man, this looks like. Not that good. So always recommend staying only one or two days before making a commitment. Remember, it can get hot there. Yes. Definitely it gets really warm. Isn't there a different or isn't there a direct flight from Cebu to Baguio? Probably is. I have never looked, to be honest. Uh, Maggie says, Alex, would you mind greeting every Filipino around the world? A happy Independence Day. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for coming back to the Philippines to joy. Thank you, Margie, for, um, I've mentioned it a couple of times, but once again, happy Independence Day to all my Filipinos. But I'm going to make a short about that maybe, just to say, you know, happy Independence Day. Manny says, I like watching your vlog, Alex. Thank you. Dan says, good stuff. Thanks, Alex. My pleasure, guys. This is all making me um, happy that you guys are enjoying the videos. Uh, Maddie says, please visit also the Cordilleras and Cordillera Administrative Region. There are a lot of beautiful places to visit, hike in the mountains. That's the first time I've heard of this, uh, Cordilleras. Hmm. Might be like a nice mountainous area, perhaps. I'll take a look. Yeah, I've never heard of that area, but why not? If it's beautiful, I like beautiful places and beautiful things. All right, one last sip, and I'm going to say goodbye to everybody and finish this exactly at two hours. Cordillera, okay. Luis says, um, I had no idea there was any cold weather in the Philippines until I heard about Baguio. Yeah, me too. I'm like, there's no way because everywhere is so hot. But I guess Baguio is a place to be. 
I wonder if there are any foreigners there. There has to be because if it's a cold place, I think people just want to escape the heat and get there. All right. Thank you guys for being here. Appreciate the questions, the streams, the likes, the views, the subscriptions to the channel. Thank you guys so much. You guys are wonderful. I'll see you guys on Thursday evening as promised so we can give other people a chance to join these live streams. Thank you once again, everybody. See you next time. Good evening, good morning, and happy Independence Day.